one of our final questions. How will you prevent embarrassment? And the answer to this is partially. Things will happen that will embarrass you because you won't be able to think up all the ways that things can go wrong in advance. Here's some examples. You decide to train a system to converse by chat with your users like humans do. And what do you do? You grab a whole lot of real examples of human speech, human texting conversations for one another, and you train your system on it, and then you release it to talk to your users, and you are surprised when it embarrasses you by learning profanity and using that upon your users. You could have seen that coming. The world represented by your training data has this stuff. The system learns that world. It doesn't have any of the additional things like good judgment if you didn't build that. Well, it's just a pattern finding thinger. It doesn't think. So don't be surprised when it starts using that on your users. Now, some of you could have seen that coming. Maybe others wouldn't have. And if you get caught by surprise, what you don't want to do is be in the situation where you have to say to your team, okay, gather around, let's figure out how to fix this next quarter. And in the meantime, here is this thing cursing out your users. Oh, you want to be able to fix it immediately. And in order to be able to do that, you need to build a policy layer. And that policy layer needs to grow up alongside your system. So what's a policy layer? It's a little like the filter that we develop as people. When you're five years old or whatever, you may look at someone's outfit and you may blurt out, oh dear, what are you wearing? That's a ridiculous outfit. When you are a grown-up, you still think that. <laughs> it's not like you don't think that. But now you have a policy layer, a filter, where you're like, just before I blurt that out, should I actually output this output? Maybe I should instead say, how about that weather today? <laughs> that is what a policy layer does. It checks the output. It doesn't go and tamper with the learning. You still think it. But if the output is unacceptable, clips it out. And so you build this thing in a way that is really easy to interact with the policy layer so that when the embarrassing thing happens, you can go and adjust the policy. Okay, from now on, anything that's in this list of swear words just isn't allowed out. Okay, for now, for now, we've staved off embarrassment. And then that's just fixing, of course, the symptom. You want to go and look at retraining and fixing the underlying thing later on, and that is what you gather your team around to think about how that will be done by next quarter. Here's another example of the same kind of thing. In this country, when users buy a baseball bat, what do you think is the most likely item that they buy alongside the baseball bat? A baseball or a glove or something like that, something for playing the game. Now imagine a fictional country where they don't play baseball, but they have a lot of crime. In that country, what do you think is the most likely item bought alongside a baseball bat? Yes. <laughs> now, this is not a nice world that I have made up for you, but it might just be the reality. Do you want to blurt that out directly at your users? Or do you maybe want to be able to have a think about it? <laughs> like, here you are, who's used to baseball in America. You've gone to this country on holiday. You maybe want to play baseball with your new friends. You go to the shopping website, and here it tells you this. You've, you, in your cart is a baseball bat. Users like you. <laughs> Would you like to consider buying a balaclava? No one wants that situation. So please, when you're building these things, if that does happen to a user, they will probably start posting about it and then social media explodes and then everyone is trying to poke at your system and find all its funny failures. And that gets embarrassing really quickly, so you want to be able to shut that down. In general, the solution that we're coming around to is building safety nets in the form of policy layers that sit on top of your machine learning system's logic 
and check whether what it's about to blurt out is acceptable or not. And if it isn't, suppress that. If it looks like a curse word, just don't let it out there. And make sure that you are building this policy layer alongside your other productionization efforts. Build this policy layer so that it's really easy to interact with it instantly. So that when the embarrassment happens, Make it so that it can't show up again, otherwise everyone will be trying to get your system to do this embarrassing behavior and then blogging about it and everyone is laughing at you. So you want to be able to deal with it instantly, fix the problem. And if you've engineered everything without a policy layer, you have to go and do big heavy things like retrain the whole thing and fundamentally change how your inputs are dealt with and logged. You don't want to have to do that, that takes too long. You might want to do that later to fix the underlying problem, not just the symptoms, but in the meantime, have a way to deal with the symptoms. So you're not hurting your users or embarrassing yourself. Policy layers, the safety nets, they, they keep everybody safe. So make sure that you have that on top of your system. And again, if you think about where the fix is most reliable also, think about uh, how you might prevent a kid from using profanity. Option one, try to shield them and don't show them anything that might teach them something bad. Or option two, let them see everything they want, but the moment that word tries to bubble to the surface, clipped out can't even be uttered. Which one is the more reliable fix? It's probably the second one. Because if you try to curate your evidence too much, there's a lot of good intention in saying, ah, this thing would be offensive to even allow the system to learn from and then you snip it out, full good intentions. Meanwhile, the system can recover that signal just by combining some other features, some other way to get you exactly that all over again. And you just think you've solved the problem, but you haven't. It's probably safest. You can aim at the, the root cause, sure. Try your best to fix that in the underlying learning, but have that second backup thing that really guarantees that no badness escapes. So step 10 is finished. You now have your production ready system with automated retraining and safety nets. Now you make your launch decision.